I welcome all of you today for this a special training meant for the school owners, school managers, and the school administrators. And um, my expectation and my desire for you this time is that you will apply it wisdom and you will make use of this training to benefit your school. And we're being on the school finance and accounting. And today, we want to look at a very major aspect of the accounting of the school. We are looking at the typical revenues and expenses of the private school. And this includes both day schools and boarding schools. So I'm going to give you a comprehensive revenue expected by standard revenue and the standard uh, expenses or costs operating the private schools. School revenue is the income that school uh, received from different sources. It is used to fund the school operations such as teacher salaries, textbooks, school supplies, and educational instructional or instructional materials. So revenue is then the total amount of income generated by the school from normal school operations although there are two main classes or types of revenues and we call them the operating revenues and the non-operating revenues uh maybe it is the first time of hearing that but on the course of this training are we able to break it down and then give you what you are expecting and what you need to know? But you must understand that I'm giving you this for a standard school. It could be that your school is still small and you are not up to this. You can pick some of these items as your revenue items. You can even take some of these expenses as your operational expenses. You may not carry all. So you will you not be thinking, there are so many, you have never heard of this, but based on the size of your school. But you need to understand also that your school is expanding. You are expecting to grow. So that's why you need to maintain and keep this standard information given to you during this training and try to apply them as a school expand or grow but in the other hand expenses now expenses are the costs that the schools in chaos in running its operations they are deducted from the revenues to arrive at profit or loss so expenses can be actually be grouped or categorized into different types such as number one operating expenses still that will call costs of sales number three we have non-operating expenses so we'll look at them as we move on now but what then is the operating expenses operating expenses are those costs that are directly related to day-to-day -to -day 
operations of your school business. He has a lot in stock. Example of the operating expenses include rents, staff salaries, utilities, and uh, other cost implication. Then the cost of sales that has to do with those um, cost of buying the goods or the, the items you resell. For example, you bought uniform, uniform, and you need to sell them. The cost of going to a bar, going to a market, and then the, the cost of the material itself, and all those costs, you put them together before you now dispose or sell these material items to the pupils or students. So you group them together, and then you have your cost. It is based on the costs of sales that you know what exactly are you going to sell these materials the other one is non-operating expenses these are expenses that are not directly uh, um, are not directly related to the day-to-day -day operations of the school so let's look at the typical operating revenues number one is your tuition fees. You know, the school fees has embodiments. The school fees have components. So these components of the school fees is what we are going to dissect and analyze so that you know what make up that fees you receive collected in the schools. Number one is tuition, tuition fees. Number two is the feeding fees. If you are operating boarding schools, then you need to buy food items and then and that food items is meant for the boarding students and so forth. And then we have what we call boarding fees. That has to do with the beddings, the accommodations, and some other thing that is being factored into that boarding fees. And then we have what we call textbook fees, the textbook that you sell to the students. Or sell to the parents on behalf of the students is the um, is one of the source of revenue to the school because obviously if you manage it well you must have a spillover so um you have excess you manage it well so we have uniform fees when you collect it for uniform obviously all cannot go for uniform so that's why that in this training will give you the techniques how you can manage this material so that you can get what you call excess from the cost of it. So we have medical fees, we have maintenance fees, we have development levy, we have a yearbook and newsletters, all these things factors into the fees. And then we have what we call STEM or robotic or AI. That is has to do with the computer trainings and the uh, technology, uh, ICT, and so forth. We also charge the pupils or students to pay. They will have what we call exam fees. These are also factors into the school fees. And they will have admission forms. And this comes forth before they do, or during the enrollment. The people paid money for the um, for the enrollment, for the form. And uh, sometimes not all that pays the you are uh, you are admitted. So you see that you have enough to come in, depending on the publicity that you do before the enrollment, so they can have more coming in in this avenue. Then we have what we call acceptance fees. Now, once admission is given to students, the parents are expected to pay uh, to accept the the uh, admission. And on this process, they paid some fees for the admissions acceptance. And then we have uh, these uh, transcripts or testimonials and certificates as students, either the DS3 students or the SS3 students, and they are either they want to go move to another school and then they need transcripts. And then they pay for it is also part of that 
uh, items or revenue items that bring in money or the testimonials and also for the um, what they call the certificate collections also some money is paid on them and that builds and give up your revenues so the that that, that forms the operating revenues of the school number two is non-operating revenues and this includes talk shop you have a talk shop in the schools or a kind of canteen and there the students patronize and buy food and buy snacks and buy some things there <clears throat> and there particularly is just see that the the sales there or the, the it brings in some money because at the end you need to deduct what you use in buying those items and then other expenses whatever that remains comes in to the school then it has canteen also the same thing that's what happened in canteen that you equally have that and then in the building school you have you have for what we call laundry services for the students and it's all free the students are charged their materials that are washed or dry cleaning and so forth that also is another avenue whereby fees or money comes in to the power of the schools and then you have what we call uh, summer classes, extension classes, or extramoral classes. And also students are also being um, charged to pay for those um, extra extra classes. And that also brings in some money. So it, 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 it all depends on your management. If you manage it well, it will allow someone to come in and to be exploiting the schools. And you see some of these things I mentioned here, and then they siphoning money and takes money away. So if you, as a school manager or the owner or the administrator, you should know that these are the avenues that the school can build up its revenue buffer. So now, apart from that, we have what we call excursion fees. Excursion when the student want to go for out of class uh, learning or uh, training. And like excursions, and then these students also pay for this. And they actually, it also, also depends on your management. If you manage the way, you have some spillover remaining after the expenses. Then we have what we call sport in hard sport um, um, fees. These are also used to organize the extracurricular um, activities for the students and the out there, and they use it either buying some food, they're buying some sportwears, and then at the end, it still depends on you. So that's why that you, as the school owner and the um, administrator, you need to be vast with this accounting language so that you know if the areas you can mop money and bring it uh, for the school. The school need money. You need money because, and um, as I said, that for you to retain the students, your school must be conducive. And these are the avenues that you get some inflow that helps you build up your schools. So these are then the typical example of the revenues that is open for the school. There are some others depending on the, the largeness or the size of your school. There are some big schools that are already running farming. They have some fishing, they have some uh, poultry, and that, these are some of the things that actually brings in money into the school. So you need to sit down and then think strategically to make sure that you also exploit these avenues to increase your school revenues. Now, let's look at expenses. Now, the expenses, as we explained, are the cost of operating the business. You cannot just piling up money without using it. So you need to, if the, if we call it outflow. The revenues are the inflow, while your expenses are the outflow. Outflow takes money out. What are those things that takes money out? What are those things? And sometimes, as we are going to look at the budget, you look at we have the current, we have the capital, the recurrent expenses. And then uh, here, I will give us uh, the, the operationals, what you need. But there are other costs and uh, capital um, uh, capital business or projects that you equally need to spend money. This one is not even spending. The capital project is not spending. It's not spending. Rather, you are building up your capital. And as I told us the other time that when you get into your the um, bank statements or the financial statement, you should be able to know what you are worth, what your school worth. 
and that will be the, 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 the volume, the volumes of your asset that you have built up during the period this hold has been in existence. So that those ones are not costs, are not expenses. Now let's look at the the expenses. We'll look at there are three categories of expenses. The other one is already that uh, one is operational expenses, two is cost of sales, and three is non-operating expenses. Let's look at the operating expenses. The operating expenses, this includes the administrative expenses. Number one, the staff salaries and wages comes under this. Two, the advertising and publicity. That's where the money goes because if you want to build up the schools, if you want to increase the size, if you want to increase your fund, you need to put in money in the publicity and the adverts. There are various ways. As you go in, I will tell you these ways. And some of these ways you can use to advertise and then publicize your schools. It depends on their different ways you can do that. So we talk about the electricity bills or charges. Where you are using NEPA bills and then you know that you need to take care of that. Then we have what we call entertainment. Entertainment, this is normal. And then you use it as you have some visitors and just try to entertain some of the parents. And that will give them some, that means will make the school more enjoyable and pleasurable for them. Get some snacks for them as they come for one thing or the other and attend them. And then apart from that, we have what we call um, the generate, uh, generating or generators uh, operations. And you want to generate that, you need fuels, you need a diesel to do that. And then we have motor running expenses. Motor running expenses, is, this is where you are going to spend money to buy fuel and fuel the vehicles that you are using for the school operations. And then we have motor vehicle licenses and insurance. We have audits through other professional fees. We have medical expenses. We have legal and association fees. We will belong to one association or the other. You need to be paying some prestations and renewals and then you pay some fees. And then we have uh, communications and the courier, courier services. And um, the directors need, um, uh, need a recharge card and then the, some of the aides of departments or the administrators or the managers need to communicate with external people and also internal so that will need you to spend some money in the communication gadgets and then in the recharge cards and then sometimes postages and then sending um, the correspondent out and sending messages, messages out. And these are where what we need to factor into the communication, the career uh, expenses. And then because you need to be informed of what is going on around you and that is you have to buy dailies newspapers or what we call periodics and then in the school you have periodic for the school so you need to try to so that you can be fast and then be acquainted with what is going on in this with the schools and then we have what we call printing and stationery that is very basic either during the examination period or during the the PTA meetings and then some other things like you need to print out even the newsletters you need to print out and then some other things that need to be done in the schools it comes under the printings and stationery. Then if you are renting apartments, you need to pay rent. Or maybe your own is on lease. You need to pay lease cost so that your school can, um, can move on so that you will not be embarrassed by the uh, landlords and so forth. And then we have um, sanitation and cleaning, even the gardens. There are some of us have some garden within the schools. And then the sanitation school needs it to be clean, neatness, and then the, you, you need to invest money, spend money for the cleaning and the sanitation of the school prems. And then we we'll talk about school publications. There are some schools that published some materials, and that is very good. It's part of the publicity. 
so that as you give it out to the parents, as you give out to people, and they're reading about your schools, and that will make them have some life material with them, which remind them of your schools. Then we have security expenses, and this is very, very unique at this time that you cannot do without security. And therefore, you have to make sure that you are making provision for for security. Uh, maybe uh, if your schools are in clustered, you can arrange where you have a group um, uh, security agents to take care of the schools to avoid children being kidnapped or some things just happening within the school environment. So security expenses is very key. And then apart from that, we need to take care of our staff, for the staff welfare and also the termination uh, benefit. That's some of them that might spend the rest of their lives in the school. And uh, by the time they, they on the exit, they cannot just exit your school without something. You need to make sure that you plan ahead to make sure they take care of their welfare. And in fact, for you to retain teachers in the schools, welfare play important roles. There are some students or there are some schools that lose. I mean, the rate of uh, labor turnover is very high because of not being able to take care of some of the staff and some schools are waiting for them there and they call them and they increase their money. So let's spend money, spend money to get money. If you retain good teachers, then you'll be able to make sure and see that parents like such environment. Not only that, we have um, transport and traveling expenses, we have examination fees, we have um, the fees and money we spend on practical sciences, home economics, fine arts, and then uh, BHE. And then also the repairs and maintenance are part of what we spend money for. Let's, before we run up these sessions, let's look at the non-operating expenses. Non-operating expenses. These are, example, the summer school expenses, the graduation expenses, the valedictory service expenses, then the transport expenses, and then the financial charges. If you have collected loan, you need to be paying back the money, the charge. And then we have what we call depreciation. That comes in as not actually expenses, but then you are making provisions for the renewing or renewals of such um, items of that depreciation. Let's quickly run down to cost of sales. Now, school revenues is the income that schools received from different uh, sources. It is used to fund it. And then uh, the cost of um, cost of sales. What has called it cost of sales? And these are those items that you in procure or purchase in order to resell them. Before you resell them, you must have added all the cost implications of getting those items. Examples are food items. Two, uniforms. Three, textbooks. Four, exercise books. Five, uh, we have uh, what we call the, the drugs you bought for the um sick bear and then we have um what do you call it a yearbook and then we have talk shop and all these items you use here you need to look at the cost of buying them before you think on the cost of selling how you are going to sell them so this unit of account is what you are going to get the cost of sales you know what you acquired those items. You know how what you sell them. And then you find the difference between the cost of purchasing it and then the the cost of sales. To see that whatever thing that remains is your cost profits, which you need to move it to the income. I mean, um, income statements. So, brethren, and um, I hope we are actually benefiting from this. Although it's, it's getting longer than usual, but then we can segment it because I want you to understand what we are in here for. Well, this evening, we're looking at the, the revenues and expenses of the school. We look at the types of what expenses, I mean, what income is, or what revenue is, 
we look at the types, the categories of revenues of this code. Then we look at the expenses. We segment the expenses into three sub category. I mean categories. And then we've given you example. Your school may not be the same, may not carry all this together. But then you sit down and look at the one that is applicable to your school, depending on the size of the school. But I wish that those people having standard school, having big standard school, must carry along. And there are some other things that you need to add. But this one seems to form the basis and the standard you have to follow. Thank you for coming. Please, if you like this, this is benefiting to you. You know that it is of advantage to you as the school owners and the those managing the schools and the administrators. There are others out here. Let's send this message to them. Subscribe for this, for this and then comment. And let's see how we can build a better schools that will yield more profits for you this time. Thank you for listening.